In light of World Refugee Day, Samaritas hosts a roundtable to discuss the conversations surrounding refugee resettlement here in the state of Michigan. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm News 8 digital anchor Luke Laster here from the Wood TV Live Desk. And joining me today is a panelist from that roundtable, Mihaela Mitrofan. She's the director of Samaritas New American Programs. Mihaela, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Luke. So before we dive in here a little bit, can you please uh, tell me about your role with Samaritas and what those new American programs are? Yeah, uh, my, my role is um, the director of New American Programs. I am responsible for the refugee and integration services at Samaritas um, covering the Southeast Michigan area. So the roundtable here that uh, that took place, tell me a little bit about it, um, what went on, what was discussed, and why it was important to host a discussion like that. Yeah, Samaritas hosted yesterday a one-hour um, roundtable discussion that um, um, covered um, just sharing updates about refugee resettlement. Uh, we offered um, information about Samaritas' efforts and preparations to uh, welcome Ukrainian refugees. Um, I also shared about my recent trip to Romania and Ukraine, and we had a couple of distinguished panelists. Uh, with us, um, among, which was the Refugee State Coordinator, Ben Cabana, and also Global Detroit, um, uh, Scott Preston, who leads the Refugee Resettlement Collaborative for Southeast Michigan. We view these events um, as an acknowledgement about the refugee um, support systems and efforts going on in, in our state. It is, an, uh, it is important to educate the um, the community, the public, that refugee resettlement work is not done in silos. Um, we partner with um, the community, with the private and public service sector. Um, we use those opportunities as celebrations as well. There are many uh, stories of success. And one of the panelists um, is um, a former refugee from Afghanistan who is an, a, a Samaritas team member. So it was very inspiring to hear her story as well. Tell me a little bit about what specifically you hit on and what you were talking about and sharing uh, on the, at that round table. Yeah, I, I took some time to, to share about my, my trip to Romania and uh, Ukraine, and I'm always uh, very excited to talk about it because it is truly that that trip came from my passion of um, getting as close as I can to refugee resettlement, meaning that um, it offered me an opportunity to, to go on the forefront of the journey, right, the refugee journey. So being a Romanian, Romanian myself or an American, a Romanian American, um, I felt a strong desire to, to go and help in, in any capacity I can. So with some generous support uh, from um, donors, private donors, but also Christchurch Cranbrook, which is a partner congregation of Samaritas, we were able to fundraise and um, I, I received the blessing of Samaritas to um, go on this trip. Um, and my my panel presentation covered um, the showing a number of photos which uh, describe my experience there. Um, I did um, engage with um, some Romanian dignitaries. I wanted to make sure that I advocate for the plea of refugees in Romania, not just the ones that are using uh, Romania as a transit site, but also for those who do not have durable options to return turn home or to go to another country for resettlement. Um, a second component of my visit was um, the distribution of humanitarian aid. Um, we filled up four vans with about 10 tons of uh, food, medical supplies, um, toiletries, cleaning uh, items, and also several mattresses. So um, that was a very hands-on um, piece of, of, the, of the project, so to 
to speak and it gave me so much joy to know that with my own hands I can do something that can help um, ha um, have an impact to, to hundreds of people. Um, and of course, we also helped uh, a group of children and mothers uh, travel through Ukraine and cross into Romania to receive uh, medical care. They are special needs children, so their needs are a bit more complex. So we wanted to make sure that the funds that we raised and contributed help them um, get the support they need. So tell me about once the uh, once the roundtable wrapped up, what came of it? What was uh, what were some of the big ideas, some of the big discussion points uh, that you can really take and move forward with after the roundtable wrapped? Yeah, uh, we were amazed to see the number of questions and comments coming in, uh, and most of them centered around um, how can we help, right? We want to, to help Ukrainians, and although uh, people cannot travel overseas to meet those very um, high needs over there, um, the audience was very open to helping here. So we got some inquiries about volunteering, hiring refugees, uh, hosting them, renting homes to them, um, and also some volunteer, uh, volunteering um, offers for mentorship and, um, you know, and any type of volunteering um, um, was, was offered there. So it's quite exciting to see that within a couple of hours, donations started coming in, but also uh, people were, were sharing their skills, talents, and availability with us. To you, why is it important to host a discussion like this? Um, it does give me an opportunity to, to tell the story. Um, I do believe that by um, deciding to, to go there, um, I have a, a stronger voice advocating for, for um, helping Ukrainian refugees. Um, the fact that I, I took two, two weeks out of my very busy schedule and um, decided to, to walk those roads and, you know, be there and talk to, to people. Um, it makes my story even more, more authentic and more personal. Um, it is um, a passion to, to see to see direct impact that that my work and the, the work of my team um, can can have uh, on people. So I'm very grateful. Samaritas has um, has sent me in true confidence that the goals that we set initially will be met. And I will tell you, look, they were exceed they they exceeded amazingly. Mihaela, is there anything else that you would like to add regarding the, the roundtable discussion that went down? Um, I do want to, to mention, to highlight one, one challenge that um, is going on with the way um, Ukrainian um, single moms and children uh, are arriving in our community. It is mainly through a private sponsorship program. So um, the federal government set up the United for Ukraine program, which is based on private sponsorship applications that are done by individuals. Um, and with that, um, the challenges are around, um, you know, the financial responsibility falling on the sponsor. So we know that there are many generous uh, community members who want to help, but oftentimes the, the fact that um, there are no professional refugee resettlement services available to, to serve this population is, is something that we are concerned about. So the resettlement agencies, are, um, are helping as much as we can. We do expect uh, yeah. funding yeah. and resources. Uh, shortly, we're well. calling right now to see if they are available. Mahila, I appreciate your time. Is there, again, anything else on the front of the round table that you want to make a mention of? Um, I do want to mention uh, for, for those who are interested to learn more about opportunities to serve and partner with Samaritas, uh, samaritas.org um, offers a number of opportunities uh, to get plugged into, into this important and impactful work. Um, we are observing um, the entire week with uh, different events. Um, Samaritas launched um, an, an art show um, 
all the information is online and we welcome uh, comments, questions, and of course, all the support that, um, that the audience is willing to offer. Ladies and gentlemen, if you tuned in maybe halfway through the stream or just now clicking in and you're viewing on Facebook, there's a link attached to it. It takes you over to woodtv.com. You're able to view our full conversation there. Mahela, thank you. Thank you, Luke. Pleasure to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a look at the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm News 8 Digital Anchor, Luke Laster. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you around.